welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be going over something that I put together kind of just for fun. It's something I've had on my mind for a while, and I was thinking, you know, as we go into the holidays, this could be a really great little, little extra to your gifts. Today, we're gonna to be going over the Anna envelope, and this comes to us from me, Oakley Roots. So as with most of my designs, the inspiration for this did come from Stony Clover once again. I've been buying these cute little envelope, uh, I don't know if it's a, not a wallet, but these little envelopes from Stony Clover are very, very cute. You can see it has a little snap, open it up, opens up just like that. On the back is a 3M double-sided adhesive. Really what this is meant for is to be stuck on the back of a cell phone. Um, I don't like doing that, but it is very, very cute. And so I was thinking, I was like, this is such a sweet little design. How could we use this as our inspiration to create something a little bit more useful for others of us? And that's where I came up with the little Anna envelope. These things are so stinking cute, guys. So I'm gonna run you through this. So as you can see, the same thing. It has a little snap on the front. We open it up and look, money's in there, what? So you can put money in here, just little knickknacks in there. And there are gonna be a couple different modification options. You can see on this one right here, we have two toned, once again, because I like the flap to have a print, but then I want the body to be something else, and I don't want the orientation to be upside down on either the top or the bottom. So you can see this way, on the front, the flap is oriented correctly, and then on the back, it's also oriented correctly. So this is one version. I'm gonna show you another one now. So for this version, it looks very similar on the front, except what we have for this one on the back, we can actually put a clear ID pocket here, and this is using the exact same template that we've already shown on the channel, and on this one, the back piece of vinyl is all one cut of vinyl. So this is a really fun little project to put together using scraps. It's a great project if you have, you know, like a gift card and you wanna, you wanna add it in a little cute way. Um, there's a lot of little ways you can tweak this. So I'm gonna go through a couple of the different options today. I did design this to be used seamlessly with the horizontal ID template. You guys have seen this before. We have a whole video going over how to use this ID template, so I'm not gonna show you how to do it but this is something you can download on the site for free or you can buy an acrylic template for in the shop, uh, but it does work perfectly with this. It is lined up everywhere. So this works seamlessly with this pattern. So we have three different options for cutting out the pieces. First, there is a free PDF. You can see it looks just like this. You can grab this from my blog, completely free to download and use however you like. Uh, just make sure when you print it off, you do use Adobe Acrobat Reader and you size it to 100% scale, not fit to page. We want this, if we want these to work with this, we need to make sure the sizing of this is correct. So this will be available on the blog. If you have an automatic cutting machine, you can also download the SVG files. Those are available over on Shop Oakla Roots. Those SVG files are a charity item, so any amount you choose to donate when you purchase the SVG files will go all to charity. So just know that any contribution using SVG files goes 100% to charity. But the option I know so many of you want, and I don't blame you, because it's cute. Yes, we have acrylic templates for this look how festive these are. I was feeling Christmas gifts. I know we're not to Halloween yet, but guys, I am in the holiday mood. So we do have a set of acrylic templates. It does include, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six pieces to this. Every set has six pieces. So you will have the flap. You will have the front part of the pocket. You will have the back part if you're doing a two-tone. You will have the full piece. This could also be used for lining the holder if you wanted to use the heat transfer vinyl. You'll have the little accent decoration piece, which is optional, and then another little piece for the tab, because why not? So this set will be available on Shop Oak Roots. If you've been here for a minute, you know that a lot of times our templates sell out very quickly. So just make sure you're signed up for the email list. If when you go to look, it's not there. I do send out emails every week or so when I update stock. So that's how you're gonna be notified right away when this has been restocked. So I did want to let you know this is a vinyl or cork project. This is not, we're going to leave a lot of raw edges here and we're pretty much going to sew everything together in one go. So you want to use something that can easily be left raw. 
cork, vinyl. You could even probably use waterproof canvas, maybe nylon. I would suggest you seal the edges if you use something like a waterproof canvas or nylon with some sort of edge painting or something like that. I did do some edge painting on these, which is really, really cute. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of fun options here, but this is a mostly vinyl or cork project. I will be showing you how to piece this together today. Using vinyl, I'm also gonna use a little bit of heat transfer vinyl because I don't personally love the look of you know, the white cottony backing on vinyl. So I just cover it up with some glittery heat transfer vinyl. It's it's a really simple, quick little thing you can do and it makes it look pretty professional. I'm not gonna walk you through the ID pocket today, but I will tell you at one point in the tutorial where you can add this. It's very simple. Um, but like I said, we do have a video going over how to build this little pocket and then you just sew it on. I'll give you a warning when it's time to do that. So if you're new to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. This is a very quick, fun, scrappy little project. I mean, the thing I love about these little projects is that, especially going into holidays, right? We're all kind of like, what do we get? So, I mean, I have a number of people in my life that it's like, there is nothing I could buy them. There's nothing I could buy them. They have everything they need. I mean. It's hard to find things to buy people. And so something like this, you probably have a vinyl or a cork or something that reminds you of that person. You can just use that, make them a cute little thing. Um, you can easily put, I'm gonna put a little swivel hook on this today, but you could put a keychain on this so that way they can clip it to their bag, to their purse. This is, this is a thoughtful, inexpensive, quick item that's going to actually mean a lot to somebody and will probably be used all the time. So I think this is like a, this is a great little gift to have going into the holidays. All right guys, let's get started. All right, so here are all the little goodies we're gonna be using today. Here is the printable. You can go ahead and print this off. This little key ring strap over here, it is two inches by half of an inch. So if you want, you can grab yourself a ruler and measure that just to make sure it is two inches by half of an inch. This one looks good. And that will let you know you printed this correctly. Everything is the right size. So this is the free option right here. All you have to do is print it off, cut it out, and you'll be using those pieces today. Another option is to use your Cricut or Brother, whatever type of cutting machine you have. There is an SVG file available that you can purchase. Proceeds all go to charity. Um, and then just use that to cut everything out for you. Or you can use the most fun option and get yourself a set of templates. Um, th it is quite a few templates. It is six pieces and not all of them are necessary. It really just depends on what you wanna make. We did debate offering different sets. Uh, it, it was gonna get a little too messy. So the option is just one set with all of the templates. This template set though does not include the clear ID pocket. Those are sold separately. This is also a free download if you want to just download the file, print it off and trace it. But if you want an acrylic template, those are available on the shop as well. Remember, you're going to want the horizontal one. The vertical template will not work with this project. You will need the horizontal template for this. We do have a video showing you how to use this and build a little pocket. And I will tell you when we get to that point where you would add this, but it's very simple. So. Not going over this today though. So I like to have lots of different options, lots of colors. Normally when I'm doing one of these, I'm using scraps so I don't have an entire roll. But for today's video, I wanted to make sure I could show you exactly how to cut this all out properly. But this is a very fun, scrappy project. So I will be making the two-toned version. So for the flap, I'm gonna use my piece here that has a directional print. So I'll use this for the front flap. I'll use this pink for the back body. And then I'm gonna mix up the front pocket, which is this piece right here. This is a little accent piece. You do not have to add the center piece if you don't want, uh, but I'm gonna mix up a couple of these for that little accent right there. And then I'll use the full panel template for the lining. So you can see I do like to add a sparkly heat transfer vinyl to this. Again, great for scraps and it doesn't have to be glitter. You can use any sort of heat transfer vinyl and you do not have to have a Cricut or anything like that in order to use the heat transfer vinyl. You can easily just use this, trace it out, iron it on and you're done. The closure for this is a snap. So I'll be using a metal snap. You could also use the plastic cam snaps, but you're going to need a set for that. You can see that there is an optional little tab here. You can easily put this tab on, sew it on like I did here, and then later add a keychain loop to it, which is very simple. Or you can use a tool like this and sew it in place, which is what I'm gonna show you how to do today because then you can just clip this onto anything you own. To help with installation, I have a little hole punch here, and then I have a handheld cam snap press, um, and then the die set to go with these little snaps. 
So for the thread today, I do suggest a more durable type of thread, um, either a Mara thread, which I'll have linked down below, or a Tex 35 or 45 weight thread. Definitely don't use like a thin cotton thread on this, Th that probably will break. So for the top thread, I have a Tex 45 weight thread, and then for the bobbin, I have just a Guterman thread. And the needle I'm using today is a Microtex 8012. I will tell you that there's pretty much, after you've built the pieces out, there's just one stitch to hold everything together. Uh, so you got one shot, <laughs> so you gotta go slow today. But the thread on the bobbin will be seen in the end, either on the top here or it will be seen on the bottom here. It just depends which way you decide to sew this. So pick a bobbin thread that you don't mind working with your material today. All right, so let's cut this out. Let's see, this is a fun little vinyl. I'm gonna go ahead and separate all of my template pieces. So I'll be doing the two-toned version. You could easily just use this and make one piece for the whole unit. It totally is up to you. And you'll notice that the text on these does tell you the directions. So don't cut it out like this or else your flap will be upside down. You wanna cut it out like this. Who do I want on the flap? I don't know. Also remember there is a seam allowance here because we will be attaching it to the bottom back piece. So there is a dash line to let you know where that seam allowance is. So this is especially helpful if you have one of these smaller <laughs> rotary cutters. The 45 millimeter rotary cutter is a bit big for this, but we'll give it a try anyways. We're gonna just gently hold this template in place and go around it. If you're going to be tracing, make sure you have a vinyl marker. I'm gonna trace right around the little rounded bit here because that is tricky for me to get to with my rotary cutter. So let me see, let's move this up. Looks like everything is good except for that rounded bit. So you can use an X-Acto knife here if you'd like, or you can use some scissors. Let's see, I'm just gonna trim this down. And then I can just use my drawn line to round out this bit here. There we go. So now I have my flap, and then I think I'm gonna use this piece here for the body. So I'll grab this template. And once again, I think I can lay it like this. And I'm just going to cut along the straight edges using my rotary cutter. And so then I have this left over and then I'll take my marking tool, or like I said, you could use an X-Acto knife or a smaller rotary cutter. And I'll just round out these corners like that. And then I'll just use some scissors to cut those down. Remember, none of these edges for these main pieces is going to be eaten up in a seam. So you wanna make sure you're not using a Sharpie here or some sort of pen that's gonna stay because then you'll see it in the end. All right, so I have my full back panel ready to go. I'm just gonna clip that and set it to the side. And now let's build the front panel. You could just use this piece here and just have one color panel, or if you'd like, you can layer them up to have a little bit of contrast. Layering it up also helps with the snap a bit. It provides a little bit more beefiness to the snap. So I think I'm gonna use this orange here. There we go. And I think for this one, I'm just going to trace it and cut it. Since we do have some little angles here. So I've got that traced with my vinyl marker and now I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut it out. Okay, so I have that part of my pocket done. Let's put that to the side. I think I'm also gonna use this orange for the tab. So I'm just gonna measure out half of an inch by two inches for that. You can use this if you'd like, but it's not necessary if you have a ruler. There we go. And now the last piece for me is this fun little contrast. Uh, let's use the print for that actually, that sounds fun. Let's see. What about our little, go and use this little design down here. I'm just gonna set it in place. And also this has a hole marked in the very center. If you have the printable version, there is a dot marked here. That's where the snap goes. So as you can see, when I do this, it's gonna be right over his eyeball, which I think is kind of funny. So I'm gonna leave it. But if, if you know, you're trying to avoid something looking a little strange, just remember, there is a snap that's going to be installed here. Okay, so now I have my accent done. Everything is cut out. Okay, and then the last piece I'm gonna cut out is the lining. This is totally optional. You could just leave the back of the vinyl exposed. Personally, I do like it covered. So I'm gonna use the full panel template for that. I'm just gonna lay it on the back. This is the back of my heat transfer vinyl. Most heat transfer vinyl, I would assume all of it, has this clear plastic carrier sheet on the front, and then it has the back of the actual vinyl. This backing here is glue, and when it gets hot, it will glue itself to something, but you can also draw on it. So I'm gonna just 
put this down and I'll just trace it with my marking tool and then I'll cut it out with my scissors. And this piece here is okay if you cut it a little bit bigger than where you marked because what we'll do is we'll heat this to the main exterior panel and then we can trim it down. So it, it, this one is actually a better if you cut it a little bit bigger than it needs to be and then trim it down to the size of your vinyl versus it being a little bit smaller because if it's a little bit smaller then some of the edges might be showing on the inside of the wallet. Okay, now let's build this cutie patootie. Forgot to show my bag tag, but I will also be adding this bag tag on. So the first thing I wanna do is build the exterior panel. So I'm going to take the exterior back bottom panel, the exterior front flat panel, and I'm gonna lay them right sides together, lining them up along this straight edge right here. Grab some clips and clip them together. And now let's sew along the straight clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. So once you have this sewn together, you're going to flip it so that the seam goes behind the bottom panel, not the flap. So just flip it up, give it a finger press, gently. Get it as straight as you can. I know a lot of people are selling those really, really cool seam rollers. I think I have one. Here, I've got this wooden one, which I love, uh, but there are some pretty like rainbow ones out. You know I'm gonna get myself a rainbow one. But I'm just going to press down this seam like this. Try to get it nice and flat, there we go. And now we're gonna top stitch this on the bottom panel here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, I would suggest back stitching at the beginning and the end here. So now just to test this out, you can grab your full panel and this should be the same size. It might be a little tiny bit smaller or a little tiny bit bigger because of seam allowances and folding material. Sometimes it's not exactly, uh, but it should for the most part be fine. So now what, what I'm gonna do before I attach my heat transfer vinyl, I'm going to attach my bag tag. And I'm just going to center it a little bit lower here. I'm not putting on the ID pocket. So if you were, you would need to think about that because you see the ID pocket doesn't go up. You can't see. It doesn't go up all the way here because when we build this little ID window, this top piece here, it does fold down. So it's not this tall. It's just a sm bit smaller than that, but it will cover up pretty much the entire back of this little envelope. So you can see the finished one here, once it's folded, the whole back is this. So if you have a bag tag, you probably don't wanna put it down here if you're going to be using the ID window. Another option for that then would be on this front panel right here, or even on the flap. But I'm not using this today, so I can put this on the bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of center it. I'm gonna grab some of this super fancy double-sided tape. And I will use this to hold the tag in place. All right, so I'm just gonna use my eyeballs here to center this. I think that looks fine. So now I'm gonna go top stitch this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along all four edges. Uh, whenever I do bag tags, especially since I know I'll be covering this side of the vinyl, I don't back stitch at the beginning and the end. I just leave the tails nice and long. So these are the top threads and then over here are the bobbin threads. And then I pull on those bobbin threads and I like to grab a stiletto and I just pull those top threads to the back. All right, there we go. Now we have this panel all ready to go. So now what I wanna do is attach the heat transfer vinyl to the back of this. And I'm gonna show you a little trick, but you have gotta be careful, okay? You've gotta be careful when you do this. I am going to attach my little tag here between the heat transfer vinyl and the main panel to help it stay in place. So it's not just depending on the stitches to hold it in place, it's also like glued in place. But it's very easy for you to accidentally melt this. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. So the first thing I wanna do is grab some more of my double-sided tape and just little tiny bits because I'm going to tape the two short edges, wrong sides together, and then I'm also gonna tape this to this piece. So I have two pieces of tape, one to go on the wrong side on the short edge of my little tab and then I'll get another piece and this is just going to go on the other side on the right side so that I can stick it to here. So first let's stick these wrong sides together. There we go. Now what you're going to want to do is fold this. You see when you fold it, it doesn't fold right on the seam like that. It's going to fold like this. So that seam is going to kind of peek out through the front. So 
think about where you want this tab to go. I like it to be on the right side. You can also grab your template or your vinyl cut and see how far this pocket's gonna go up. So let's see. This is just, it just takes some finagling. I mean, I can give you a measurement. I'll, I'll give you the measurement and I'll put it on the screen for how high up this is if you just wanna do that instead. If you don't wanna go through the trial and error like me, I am just going to tape this down. And again, you don't have to be that picky about this, honestly. There we go. Just gonna tape it down like that. So that's in place. And remember, we're taping it to the wrong side of this panel, not the right side, because we're not turning anything out right side out. Everything is going to be sewn together now, wrong sides together. So now here's my heat transfer vinyl. I'm just gonna lay it on top so it's fully covering my panel. Now here's the thing. If your heat transfer vinyl is a little bit on the small side and you line it up on the bottom edge, but then you have this situation here peeking out, just remember the bottom edge here is not going to be seen because it's going to have a pocket covering it. So if it's a little small and you have to sacrifice the top edge or the bottom edge, sacrifice the bottom edge, okay? Line this up so it lines up with the flap and the top edge here, because that will be seen when you're using it. And then don't worry so much about the bottom edge. No one's gonna see that. But if you made your heat transfer vinyl just slightly bigger, then this shouldn't be a problem at all. So now I'm gonna grab some scrap material here. Now you can see I'm not covering up this over here. I don't wanna cover that up because I will melt it. So I'm going to cover my unit here. And I believe you can have the iron just directly touch this plastic, but I'm nervous. I'm gonna cover this unit here and I'm not gonna actually cover my tab because I don't wanna forget that it's there. So now I'm gonna take my iron and as I'm ironing this, I'm just making sure my iron never goes over this tab over here. I don't think we need any steam. But you see how I get close over here? But my iron is not going on this tab because we have to hold the iron in place for quite a few seconds in order to get that heat transfer vinyl to stick and if we hold this iron, even with a pressing cloth over this vinyl, it will melt it. So I'm just gonna carefully go around it. And for this first round, really what I'm trying to do is just get this stuck as much as possible. And then I can go back and I can check which areas aren't sticking enough. All right, so I'm gonna look at this, kind of pull on the edges, those are okay. Right here, you can see it's not sticking at all because I was so careful, that's okay, I can go back with that. But every other place is good. So now all I have to do is focus on this area. So I'm once again going to cover. You know what, let's try, let's just try not covering it. So I'm just gonna take the tip of my iron and if you have a tiny iron, that will help too. And I'm going to press down right next to this tab. Now, if this all seems just a little too scary for you, you don't have to glue this tab into place. What you can do instead is just sew it into place when we sew the pocket to this back panel. But if you're comfortable working with this, you see how I'm pressing it down and you can kind of see the indentation of the tab. And then I'm gonna go on the tab where the heat transfer vinyl is. There we go. Okay, now we wanna let that cool for just a moment. All right, and once that's cool, go ahead and remove the plastic sheet. How cute is that? And if you find any bubbling or anything, you can iron it again, but just make sure you cover this with a pressing cloth. You don't want the iron to touch this glitter here. So just cover it with a pressing cloth of some sort, scrap fabric, um, and then put the iron on it again to just get down any bubbles. But I think we're good, and this is nice and secure in here. And like I said, my cuts were a little bit big, so I am going to trim them down. I'm just trimming down any overhang of the heat transfer vinyl, but I'm not cutting my pink vinyl here. All right, that is looking so fun. And if you don't wanna use heat transfer vinyl, you could use a waterproof canvas here and just some sort of a adhesive basting spray to hold it in place. Um, that's another option, I have tried that. It's a little bit, it's a little bit more loosey, but it's definitely an option. So now let's build the front pocket and then all we have to do is put it together. So front pocket could be just this, and this will give you an idea of what it's gonna look like, because then you fold this down. How cute is that? Or you can add an accent, which is what I'm gonna do. Once again, if you feel more comfortable, you can grab some tape. I'll have this tape linked down below. It's very, very sticky tape. So if you want, just make sure you're putting the tape on spots you're not gonna be sewing, but you don't have to worry about anything moving if you use this tape. So now when you lay this on top, the short edge of this contrasting piece should line up with the bottom 
short edge here of our little bowl. So it's actually the top right here. And then the bottom area here should line up with the bottom edge, but it doesn't go all the way to the corners. All right, so that is centered on here. If it's a little bit low, a little bit high, that's okay. We can always trim this down in the end to get it all nice and cleaned up. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to top stitch along the sides and the tops at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm not top stitching the bottom, uh, so make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end here. All right, so now we have the front and we have the back panel, so we just have to put it together. If you prefer, you can use the holes that are marked on both of the templates and the pocket template to install your snaps now, especially if you have like a standing rivet press, it's gonna be easier for you to install this snap specifically right now versus after it's all put together. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it afterwards though. Just remember you have a couple options here. You can install your snaps here and then you don't have to worry about doing it later or you can install your snaps once it's sewn together. So what we're gonna do is we're going to lay our main panel wrong side up, so that's the lining side up. And we're gonna take our pocket panel and lay that right side up, wrong side down and just line it up with these bottom corners here. If you find that they don't line up absolutely perfectly, like it can just depend on how you cut it out, um, that's okay, we can always trim it all down to clean it up later. You just wanna get it, for the most part, lined up. And then I'm gonna use some clips here to hold it in place. Now, if you were including the ID pocket, then you would take your completed ID pocket. So that means this top edge has already been folded down and top stitched, and you've stitched in place your clear vinyl in this window. It's all ready to go, it just needs to be stitched on. So you'll take your completed ID window pocket and you're going to line it up on the back side here with the bottom rounded corners in the sides and clip that in place as well with this because we're actually gonna sew all those layers, either the two layers like I'm doing or three layers if you have this pocket, you're gonna sew them all together at the same time. I know it's a little, it's a little scary, but use your clips. You can also use double-sided tape here to help with any of this. Just make sure it's right in the edge. I actually have some eighth of an inch double-sided tape like this, so you could put that right on the edge. You have options here. So now we're going to top stitch this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Personally, I like to go around the entire edge, even though it's not so necessary over here on the flap. I like to go around everything just to make sure it just looks nice. And it also help, it does help keep this HTV in place. So I'm gonna do that. Now you have to decide, do you wanna top stitch from this side or this side? I'm gonna top stitch with the back panel right side up, but that means I do have to go very slow and keep checking to make sure, you know, this edge here doesn't start rolling up and then get stitched down like that. So you do have to go slow and just keep checking. So once you trim down your threads, if you have any like little, little loosey goosey pigtails, go ahead and just gently melt them down because then they'll seal themselves. Now let's go around and see if we have to trim up anything. So I do have a little bit of overhang over here. I'm gonna just gently trim it up because we do want everything to be the same size. There we go. All right, so this is looking so cute. So now let's install the snaps. I do have the marks made on the downloadable PDF as well as the acrylic templates. The dots are not marked on the SVG though. You will have to kind of de decide where you want to put those on your own. But I'm going to just line this up and grab a marking tool. And I did make these holes on the templates fairly large because I know a lot of you guys are using maybe like fabric markers or something that are a little bit thicker than this. And I wanted to make sure it could go in there. So if you're using a thinner pen like me, just make sure when you mark this dot, it's in the center of that hole. There we go. So I just have one little dot there. I'm gonna grab my hole punch and punch the hole for that dot. And now what I wanna do, I'm gonna take, you can either use this panel or you can use the accent panel. They both have, you can see they both have the dots marked for placement. Uh, I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna use my vinyl marker and I'm gonna mark a dot right where that hole is. And now I'm gonna close this before I punch the hole out and I'm just gonna make sure that works for me. So that's good, because it's more important that this is the way you want it versus where the template says to put it. So if you fold this down and that hole is just too high or too low, then don't put it there. What you can do instead is just fold this down like this, get it exactly the way you want it to look in the end, and then take your marking tool and mark in the hole that you punched out. And that will be the perfect placement for your snap. 
So once I have that done, I'm gonna just open this up, insert my hole punch and punch out the hole here. Perfect, so my holes are punched out and now all I have to do is install the snaps. So I do find that this hand press tool is easier to install these types of snaps, especially this one right here. This one's kind of tricky to get into your standing table press. You can do it, it's just a little tricky. Oh my gosh, you guys, I totally forgot to include this on the loop. I'm so sorry. I meant to put this on the loop before we ironed it in place. I'm so sorry. I'll put a note on the video to remind you to do that. That's okay though. I'll get a keychain and thread it on there to show you how to do that at least. So I've got my snap set and I've got my dies. I'm gonna start with this snap. So this snap is going to be the combo that has the cap, which looks just like this. It'll go on there, very cute. And then it has like the donut, that's what I call it. The donut goes on the inside. So that's the set we're gonna do first. So for that, we have a bottom die that looks like a kind of like a flat bowl that goes down there. And then the top die has a little pokey thing. And we screw that into the top. So let's put our cap on the exterior side of our flap and then the donut on the lining side. And then we'll just insert this into our press. Make sure it's all lined up and press it down. There we go, easy peasy. So now switch out the die set for the remaining two dies. So the last two pieces are the two pokey pieces, a long pokey piece and a short pokey piece. The long pokey piece goes from the inside and pokes up through the hole on the front here. And then the short pokey piece goes on top of that. And you will have to kind of hold this together and then grab your press and insert it so the bottom die goes inside and that bottom die just pokes right into the back of the big pokey bit. <laughs> and then line it up, just make sure it's all lined up before you press and then press it down. Here we go, so now we should snap this. And how cute is that? You can put a little gift card in here, put some cash in here, just something cute. And again, if you did the ID pocket on the back, then you can insert something over there, which I think is lovely. Let me go grab a keychain and I'll show you how to, it's, it's pretty easy. All right, so here's a little pink heart keychain. All you have to do is just separate the keychain, which I know it, it kills your nails, doesn't it? So if you have a tool to use instead, you can use that or, you know, find somebody with stronger nails and have them do it. But just get it threaded on there and then just gently thread it around that little tab until it's all the way on. There we go. And there you go. Now it's on a keychain and you can gift this. I just love it. I love it. I hope you do too. Alrighty guys, what do you think? It's so cute, isn't it? And you can have so much fun mixing up all the materials here. Also, I wanted to tell you guys, if you haven't looked into this before, for this little envelope right here, this sparkly stuff on the front, so on this front part right here, and then also on the tab, that is like a glitter felt. I love it. Glitter felt also works great for this project. So you could make this a felt project. So if you had little kiddos, you could definitely have them use the templates or use the printable and trace out all the pieces onto a piece of felt and then they can use their scissors and cut it out. I mean, this could be a really cute little kid project. So I hope you enjoy making these. If you do, please make sure you tag me in any of the photos that you share in social media or you can send me an email. I'm jessica at oakroots.com. Again, these are just fun little things to make and to gift. The PDF for this, which is a printable file, is completely free and it's on the blog. If you want the SVGs, all the proceeds for that go to a charity of choice uh, and the charity of the month does change frequently. So just check over there to see what the charity of the month is. Or if you know, you're a little extra, like most of us, uh, acrylic templates. Well, we're gonna have lots of options for these fun little templates and it just makes it a little, I don't know if it makes it that much easier to cut it out, but it is more fun. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.